Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is complex numbers. In this lesson, we'll learn how to draw a locus of points in an Argan diagram to represent complex numbers. Starting with circles, the general form for a circle is the modulus of z minus z1 equals r, z1 equals a plus bi. Our requirement reads, Sketch the locus given by the modulus of z plus 3 minus 2i equals 4. Write down the Cartesian equation of this locus. I'll begin by rewriting the equation to clearly identify z1. The modulus of z minus brackets minus 3 plus 2i. Close brackets modulus sign equals 4. Now I have identified the z1. Our general equation z minus z1 is now z minus quantity negative 3 plus 2i. The significance of z1 is that it provides the coordinates of the center. So negative 3 plus 2i will be at negative 3 positive 2. R the right side of the equation is the radius of the circle. So we have a circle with the center at negative 3, 2, a radius of 4. So our circle will extend to the right to the point 1, 2. We'll extend to the left to the point negative 7, 2. We'll extend up and we'll extend down. When we connect these points, they form a circle. And this is the locus represented by the equation given. The second requirement, write down the Cartesian equation of this locus. The Cartesian equation of a circle with center negative 3, 2 and radius of 4 is x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals the square of 4, which is 16. Next, half lines. The general equation, argument of z minus z1 equals alpha. z1 is a plus bi. Our requirement, sketch the locus given by argument z minus 3 plus i equals 4 pi over 3. Again, I want to manipulate my equation to clearly identify z1. So I will write argument of z minus quantity 3 minus i equals 4 pi over 3. For a half line, the significance of z1 is that it represents our starting point. We want the coordinates 3 and negative i. From here, we're going to extend at an angle of 4 pi over 3, working our way counterclockwise from a horizontal extension from our starting point. 4 pi over 3, going down and to the left, counterclockwise from our starting position. This represents the half line of the equation given. This is a half line because it's extending infinitely in one direction. We start at 3, negative 1, and extend infinitely at an angle of 4 pi over 3. Now perpendicular bisectors. Our general equation, the modulus of z minus z1 equals the modulus of z minus z2, where z equals x plus i y, z1 equals a plus b i, and z2 equals c plus d i. Our requirement, sketch the locus given by modulus z minus 2 plus 2 i equals modulus z plus i. Write down the Cartesian equation of this locus. I want to clearly identify z1 and z2, so I'll rewrite the equation as modulus z minus quantity 2 minus 2i equals modulus z minus quantity 0 minus i. I've included that zero to show that the complex number doesn't have a real part. It's a purely imaginary number that will help us in identifying the correct coordinates in our Argan diagram. z1, 2, minus 2i, and z2, 0, minus i. I now want to identify the perpendicular bisector. 
So I'll start by finding the midpoint. The midpoint is the x values added and divided by 2. 2 plus 0 over 2. And the y values added and divided by 2. Negative 2 minus 1 divided by 2. We end up with 1, negative 3 over 2. The perpendicular bisector requires the calculation of the gradient of the line segment connecting Z1 and Z2. We can calculate our gradient as M equals the difference in Y values, negative 2 minus minus 1, over the difference in X values, 2 minus 0, which equates to negative 1 half. The perpendicular to that will be 1 over negative m, which gives us a slope of positive 2. And now I can draw in my perpendicular bisector. I'll also, with a dotted line, connect z1 and z2. This is the locus of points represented in the given equation. Now before we go to part two of the perpendicular bisectors example, as an enhancement to each of these three examples, I'm going to go back to the Argan diagram. I'll label the axes and label the Z1s, and in the case of our third example, the Z2. Now looking back at our circles example, I've labeled the center as negative three plus two i. In the half lines example, I've labeled the starting point as three minus i, and in the perpendicular bisector example, I've labeled z1 as 2 minus 2i and z2 as negative i. And now returning to the perpendicular bisectors example, our second requirement is to write down the Cartesian equation of this locus. This will be in the form y equals mx plus c. We know our m value is 2 for the perpendicular bisector. We know one point on the perpendicular bisector is 1, negative 3 over 2. And with that information and some algebra, we can create the line equation y equals 2x minus 7 over 2. One final concept for this lesson is to understand how to work with the circles example in the case of an inequality. Let's consider that our inequality is the modulus of z minus quantity negative 3 plus 2i modulus sign is less than 4. In this case, rather than a solid line on the circle, we would want a dotted line on the circle. That dotted line shows that the locus excludes the points on the circle. What we will include is all points inside of the circle. If we were dealing with a less than or equal to scenario, then along with the points inside the circle, we'd have a solid line on the circle to show that the points on the circle would also be included in the locus. In these examples, we've learned about circles, half lines, and perpendicular bisectors as representations of complex numbers in the Argan diagram. We've completed our requirements, and this concludes the lesson on complex numbers and loci.